I remember you had a TED talk, didn't you, which did uh, 15 million views on how to motivate yourself to change your behavior. Okay. Yeah. What can I take from that TED talk to achieve my new year, new me goals? Okay. So um, I talk about a few principles there. And one is a lot of time our goals are in the future. Mm-hmm. So I want to go to the gym because eventually I want to lose weight. I'm not going to lose weight that very second, right? I'm not going to like get into my jeans that very day. Eventually I know that if I go to the gym, I will become healthier, right? So it's all, a lot of times about the future or you say, I want to get a promotion. So I'm going to work really hard today so I can get promotion in the future. The problem is that it's really hard to motivate yourself to do something immediate for a reward that's going to come a long time from now. So what you need to do is you need to figure out, what can I get now? I'm going to the gym because I want to be healthier and you know thinner or whatever in the future. But is there anything that I can get at the very moment? Um, I've heard people tell me that the way that they motivate themselves to get to the gym is they say, when I get to the gym and I get on the treadmill, I'm going to allow myself to watch some trash TV or uh, read like you know a magazine that I don't always allow myself to read. So that's one thing, right? Think about what the immediate rewards that you can give yourself or someone else, maybe you're helping someone else to to achieve their goals. What can we get immediately, not only in the future? For for example, another person told me that their husband, um, they really wanted their husband to go to the gym. And so the husband went to the gym and they got back and the wife um, said to the husband, ooh, I can feel your, like, I can see your muscles, right? So it was immediate, right? They Mm -hmm. gave him like immediate rewards. So try to think about, I call it like, um, bridge the temporal gap because there's an action happening today and there's this like goal in the future but you have to bridge the temporal gap to try to think about okay what can I also get now it could be an emotional response right I mean a lot of times when we do something like we work hard we solve a problem we go to the gym we feel good it could be the emotional response so maybe one way you can do is make that salient right maybe like track your your emotions, track your mood. And you can say, okay, this is what I did today, right? I went to the gym today. This is how I was feeling, Mm -hmm. right? And so that's also an immediate reward. I was thinking about this idea of discipline and what creates discipline. And I was hypothesizing if there were to be a discipline equation, what it might look like. And I kind of concluded that there's three parts to the things and areas in my life where I've been able to maintain discipline and the equation looks something like this the start of the equation would be the why like however much i valued that goal Mm -hmm. so it could Mm -hmm. be going to the gym or whatever Mm -hmm. plus the reward that i got from the pursuit of the goal so the perceived reward i got from the pursuit of the goal so that's actually like going to the gym doing the exercise being on the treadmill the feeling after walking home like the you know and then minus the cost of the pursuit of the goal. So that's like having to like leave the house, get in the Uber, put my shoes on, travel for 45 minutes, wait, you know, lose lose two hours. And if you want to be disciplined in any of your life, you need to therefore increase the why in whatever way you can get really, really clear on why that matters. And in your case, create those packs, like a social pact, a financial pact, whatever, to make it really important to you. Do whatever you can to make the reward of the pursuit of the goal more enjoyable. Might be going with a friend or something going to a gym that's closer or I don't know and then do everything you can to reduce the cost of the pursuit of the goal so right it, and, and the problem is that the costs are often immediate yeah right and yeah, then we, yeah. we fall into what's called the present bias or sometimes it's called temporal discounting which is that often we value what's happening in the moment more than the same thing if it was to happen in the future right Um, And that's true for both like bad things and good things. Things that are just happening now, our brain is like, oh, I'm going to decide what to do based on this immediate thing. Mm. And the problem is that the costs are often immediate, right? To go to to the gym. Yeah, Yeah. they come first, right? So you have to overcome those costs. And I think when, and as you're saying, one thing you could do is to try to get those rewards closer in time, right? Mm. So if I go to to the gym, I have to like walk to the gym. I, I might tell myself, okay, I can listen to a podcast while I'm walking. So that's like enjoyable. Like exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> while I'm running. Yeah. Simon Sinek threw a really, when I was at his house talking to him about this, he threw an uh, objection at me. He was like, yeah, but this morning in LA, I got out of bed 
and went and emptied the bins at 7 a.m. because I knew if I didn't, then there'd be repercussions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I ran that through this framework and I was like, well, your why was strong because the repercussions of you not getting out of bed are the bin overflows. You'd probably get fined by the local council. The reward of the pursuit of the goal really wasn't there. And the cost, fortunately, was lower than the why. So discipline occurred. Right. And, and that's because we're sophisticated creatures, right? We're not only driven. I mean, those things immediately are, are strong, but we're not only driven by them. We have these frontal lobes, right? Mm. We're a sophisticated creature. We can value things that are in the future. So what I'm saying when I say, you know, immediate is important, I'm not saying future isn't important for us and we don't mm. use that. We do, right? And we're able to do that. Um, another thing that people do is they actually put in artificial costs for not doing the right thing, right? Like a social pact is one where yeah, if I've announced pact. it to the world on my Instagram that I'm going to do it, oh, yes, then there's a absolutely. reputational cost if I don't. Right, right. And uh, for example, you know, there's there's silly things where people say, I've heard this where in, uh, for writers and they tell, I tell the friends, you know, I'm going to send you my chapter Monday at 7 a.m. And first of all, that's, that's a pact, right? I mean, I have to send it because I told you, not because you're even going to read it, right? But if I don't, then I am, you know, $100 is going to come into your account. Like maybe you even already put it, you know, as like a future thing, which you can stop, right? So there's a cost. You put a cost to what will happen if you don't do that immediate thing. Just goes to show, I think, fundamentally that we're just driven by incentives. Mm. You know, we think it's something else, but really at the very fundamental level, everything just seems to be about incentives in business, in work, in relationships, in life. Absolutely. I mean, every decision every action, conscious or unconscious, is very much about incentives, right? The good and the bad. I think what's interesting to me is that those incentives are quite variable. Mm -hmm. They can be money. Um, they can be food. They can be like social interactions, or right? Variety. They can be variety, yeah. So the, what the incentives are is very variable. What, you know, what the good that I'm getting, also the, the bad, right? What feels bad? A lot of different things can feel bad. So interesting. So if you go if you go down to like creatures low in the evolutionary scale, I think for them things are more basic, mm. right? For them it's just like food, temperature, right? Things like that that are really about survival. But as we go up and up and up the ladder and we get to humans, for us there's a lot of different things that can be incentivizing. I was saying to one of my colleagues the other day in a business that I'm like a, an investor in, he was telling me about one of his team members who was like just a bit, had lost the love of the, her work. Mm -hmm. And he told me the list of reasons she'd said in the like exit interview as to why she wasn't enjoying her work. And I looked at the list of things and intuitively it felt like the person didn't actually know why they weren't mm -hmm. enjoying their work anymore. And so I had a conversation with this person who was leaving this company and, um, we got to the very bottom of it. And at the very heart of it was just a, a loss of meaning in the job they were doing. They couldn't answer um, why it mattered anymore. They thought the work they were doing no longer mattered. And when you'd ask them, they would have said a lot of other things. You know, they would point to small little things in this and that in the office and whatever else and the music that's playing. In the, but at the very heart of it was actually just an absence of meaning. And people aren't, I don't think, very good at understanding that they've lost meaning or that meaning is so important or that what it is yeah, and that goes back to the survey that I mentioned, um, where they found that the number one thing that was important for people's happiness was meaning. And what does meaning right? mean? <laughs> what does meaning mean? <laughs> um, I guess is that what you're doing is valuable, right? To... Um, yeah, too. So that's a good question. I think it's probably beyond yourself. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe it is even something about immortality, right? Wanting to feel that what I'm doing is going to change something beyond myself. Um, and it's it's not necessarily about generosity, although, you know, generosity and could be part of it, but it's more about making a, a difference, right? Steve Jobs had, had this um, saying that he, he said something like a dent in the universe, right? Making a dent in the universe. I think a lot of people want to do that. And, it, you know, you don't have to invent the Mac to do that. It could also be how you affect your family, how you raise your children, right? And that thing, that, those are the kind of things that can continue to be even when you're not there. 
If you love the Diary of a CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor, become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests.